Hello friends, welcome back. Today we're going to target elements by ID using jQuery. This is very similar to the last one. Uh, you can also target elements by their ID attributes. First target your button elements within the ID target 3 by using the um, bling and then inside of the bling we're passing in uh, the ID of target 3. And what's target 3? Um, if we look through here we see we've named it each target 1, target 2, and target 3. Target 3 is going to be this guy. Note that just like with CSS, it's this button right here. Um, just like with CSS declarations, you type a pound before the ID's name. Then use jQuery's add class function to add the class classes animate and fade out. Here's how you'd make the button element with the ID target 6. So here they've actually written it for you. So the real people who are just blasting through this program might just copy this, run it up to here, enter it here, and then change this to 3. And then if you run the test, it'll pass. But uh, the reason that I'm going through this in detail and slowly is because I think it makes sense to understand it a little bit more. So, um, yeah, essentially we've got this broken down. Each of the buttons um, comes out into a separate... Uh, each button is divided and each button has a unique ID selector, right? So this is our first button. This is target one. This one has an ID of target one. This one has an ID of target two, which is this guy. And this one has an ID of target three, which is this guy. But because we have added the class of animated fade out, it has faded out. So it doesn't even show that it's there. Even though the button, the cursor hover over is still there. jQuery has just caused it to fade rather than actually um, make the button disappear. And we want to add a semicolon at the end to keep our code written well. Um, let's see. So this is the way you can um, pass it if you want to go quickly. Um, another thing, I just want to go in a little bit more depth. We could say something like let uh, target 3 equal the class selector, and then we could do a target 3 dot add class, the animated fade out, and this would work the same. I think this would pass the test as well. So here, instead of just um, calling it directly <clears throat> on the JavaScript selector, um, we're saving it as a variable, and that allows us to do more if we wanted to do something like that. We could go console.log uh, target 3, and we could look at the actual jQuery generated object down here. Um, this is uh, kind of useful, especially if you're debugging. A lot of the times I'll, I'd like to just spit things out into the console so I can be like, okay, well, the next thing I want to do is whatever. And if I can see it in as an object form, it makes it easier for me to, um, to, uh, it makes it easier for me to understand what to do next. Um, and so, yeah, I think that that's the kind of thing we're doing. Uh, even with the console logging here, I think it'll pass the tests. And so, again, this is not necessary. If you didn't, if you don't care about understanding this in depth, you could always just um, return exactly the way that they changed it. You could always just come in here and just change target 6 to target 3, and that would be your answer. But I think spending a little bit more time playing with it and understanding exactly what's going on is helpful. So here we've got the ID selector, and we're adding a class. Here we have the class selector, and we're adding a class. And here we have the uh, main element selector, and we're adding a class. And so uh, let's keep going. Run the test. They pass. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next lesson.